Hey, what's going on, guys? All right, today we'll be talking about supply and demand. Oh my gosh, everybody freaks out about this when they take economics. It's really not that bad. I'm going to explain this in a way to where you're going to be thinking, wow, how did I think you know, supply and demand was hard until I watched this video? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, so to make things easy, we're going to be talking about supply and demand on video games. Okay, so we could do Xbox 360 games, we could do PS3 games, just games, any game in general. Okay, so let's see, you have, a, you have a graph, you've got these two lines, you've got all this crap, these numbers here, numbers there, what does all this mean? Oh my gosh, explain this to me. Okay, you need to know some basic concepts first. On the vertical axis is going to be price, which means down here is the lowest price, and as we go up, it's going to be the higher price. And that's for each video game, it's going to be the price. Now, on the horizontal axis, this is where a lot of people get confused. This is the, this is, this is the, quantity, the quantity for each, each video game. Now, this is the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded, depending which line you're looking at. Because if, if you're looking at this supply line and you look at the quantity, that's going to be quantity supplied. If you're looking at the demand line and you're trying to figure out you know, what the price is, this is going to be the quantity demanded. So the, basically, this is going to be the price on the vertical, and this is going to be the quantity supplied or the quantity demanded of video games. Now, it may sound a little confusing, but I'm going to explain this in a way to where you're going to be like, whoa, this is easy. Okay, so we said we were going to do video games, right? So let's do video games. Okay, so let's start out with the demand curve. Demand's, you know, a little bit easier, so I'm going to explain demand to you in the simplest way I can possibly think of. Okay, so let's start, say, $70. Say each video game that you want to buy, that say, say each game is 70 bucks. Are you going to want to buy a game that is $70? So, okay, imagine this. Say you go to Best Buy, and you're looking for, you know, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, you know, the new sensation, the awesome game, and say so they want to charge 70 bucks for it, and you're like, uh, that's a little expensive, you know? So because of that, you know, what we just said, that means the demand, the quantity demanded is going to be very low. Now that now if we go vice versa and we go to $5, say Call of Duty 4, say it was only 5 bucks. Imagine that. Everyone would want it, right? The demand would be really high. So I feel safe to say that the higher the price, the less the demand, or the lower the price, the, the greater the quantity demanded. So that's basically what demand is. Now, on, on the other side, supply is similar to demand. It's a little bit different, though. Demand was modeling consumers, modeling what you guys want. This is all, you know, basically the demand was uh, how much quantity you guys would want to buy at different prices. You know, at $70, you won't want that much. At $5, you would want a ton of that. So that's what the demand curve model, the supply curve, is going to be modeling to the, uh, the manufacturer, how much they're going to supply you at different prices. At $5, they only want to supply you about $15. At $30, they supply you about $30. And $70, they supply you about $40. This is all made up data, by the way. So basically, that means the higher the price, the more they're going to supply you, you know, video games. The quantity supplied as the price goes up on games is going to be higher. Because, think about it. You know, if if, they, if if they're gonna charge more for each video game, they're gonna make you. Uh, they're gonna make a lot more because the more that they sell, the more money they make. So they have more. They have more incentive to supply more. So now that you understand what supply, you know, what the supply curve and what the demand curve are, I can you know I can give you some real world examples, show you some cool stuff. But just you know, just remember the demand curve is for the consumers, and as the price increases, the quantity uh, will decrease, and for supply. As the price increases, the uh, quantity supply increases. So this is a, the supply is a direct relationship with price, and the demand is an inverse relationship with price. So know that. Okay. All right. So you know, if you have any questions, you can email me. Whatever. It's pretty simple. I think it's pretty simple. But all right. Let's let's go over. There's two things that can happen in the market. There's what's called a surplus, and there's what's called a shortage. Now I'm sure a lot of you've heard of these. I'm sure a lot of you haven't heard of these, but let me start out with uh, let's start out with the surplus. Okay, a surplus is usually let's see, hold on one second. Sur surplus. A surplus basically means that the uh, the quantity supplied is going to be greater than the quantity demanded, which means okay, say uh, let's see, easiest way to explain this to you guys. Okay, let's say uh, 
the price uh, is going to be 70 bucks. So say for each video game, they're going to say, hey, we want to charge you 70 bucks. So if you look at 70 bucks, the demand on the demand curve at 70 bucks, the demand is going to be really low. But when you look at the supply curve at seventy dollars, the, the the quantity supply is going to be much higher. So basically, that means that the, that the uh, the manufacturers are going to be making all these games because you know they want to make more money. They're going to make more games at seventy dollars, but we're not going to want any. So do you see what I'm saying? If we don't want these games at seventy dollars, but they're making a whole crap load because they want to make money, there's going to be what's called a surplus, which means there's more video games. You know that are going to be on the shelf that aren't going to be sold because our demand for them is very low. We don't want that many at that price. So that's, what, that's what's called a surplus. There's, that means the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. So that's the surplus. Now there's another thing that can happen down here, which is called a shortage. S now a shortage is just the opposite. We said the quantity supplied was greater than the quantity demanded on the surplus. This is when the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So think about this. If it's at five bucks, everybody wants it, right? So the demand at five dollars. So if you go to Best Buy, you know, you look at your game, it's only five bucks. Everybody wants the game, you know? Everyone's going to be buying it. But at five dollars, the manufacturers, they aren't going to be supplying Best Buy with that many games because they have no incentive to make money because it's only worth five bucks. So there's not going to be anything left on the shelf. So there's going to be a shortage of the difference between these two points. Or that, that's how you calculate what the shortage would be. The demand minus the supply. This minus this. You know, whatever, whatever the distance you know, in here is, that'll be, the, that'll, be the sur, that'll be the surplus. This would be the shortage. So you can calculate each one of those. So that's different things that happen in the market right there for you. So that's a basic breakdown. And oh yeah, this big E, that's the equilibrium. That means that the, uh, the supply is equal to the demand. And that's usually what they set the price at. That's called the equilibrium price. And they cross, they meet, they're equal. There's no shortage, there's no surplus. But see, what happens if there is a surplus, that's called downward pressure on the price, which means because, the, remember the surplus meant that the price was really high and we didn't want that many, but they're gonna be making a whole ton. They're gonna have to decrease the price and try to get back to equilibrium so that, uh, more people will be buying them, and they, you know, because you want it to be right here, because that's perfect. That's the perfect point. That's that's a, that. That means a good amount of games are gonna gonna be made, and, and the price is okay. So people are demand the same amount as supply. That's where you want to be. So vice versa, if it's a shortage, they're gonna increase the price. That way, uh, the demand won't be so high, and they're gonna actually supply more at that price. So does that make sense? They're gonna want to go up from here, go down from there. That's only in the instance of a surplus or a shortage. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, I think that's the easiest way to explain it. You know, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to email me or whatever. Uh, Y'all have a good day.